In this video, I wish to talk about groups. So let's start with a simple example. Let's assume we went grocery shopping earlier in the day and have a list of things we bought and its prices. Now we wish to extract these prices. So we build a pattern assuming that the decimal and numbers following it are optional. We then use the find all function to find all the costs. Now perhaps it would be nice to separate each cost into its integer and decimal part. Can we do it in the pattern rather than doing it later? Yes we can and groups help us to do this. So all we do is enclose the components we want in parentheses. So one set of brackets for the integer part and one for the decimal. Let's test again. As you can see, the items are grouped the way we want them to. Now let's consider a second example that goes into more detail. We have a file that contains the names of actors. We have the name, phone number, email address, age, country and their Twitter ID. Python allows us to easily read such a file into a structure called a data frame. But let's take a step back. Tasks generally are not that simple. In most cases, after reading data from an input source like a database or file, we would need to do some pre-processing. So consider some requirements given by a client for this actor information. The name should be broken into a first name and last name. The telephone number should have a dash between the country code and the number. The country should be replaced with the two-digit ISO country code and the Twitter handle should be prefixed with the ampersand sign. As you can see, our requirements need us not just to search for patterns but also search and replace. Another thing to note is that our solution has additional columns. For example, name is broken into first name and last name. So where do we start? We will start by deciding on the column names we need in our final solution. The next thing we will do is group each line into the above columns. So we need a regex pattern. But this is going to be a long pattern. Thus, from a readability point of view, we will distribute this pattern across multiple lines. I'm building a basic pattern here. The idea is to get an MVP or minimal viable product. We can always fine-tune it later. So let's quickly test things. Rather than reading the entire file to test, let's just copy the first line and test. Okay, great. We see the content of each group. But it would be better if we knew which group the data belonged to. Enter the concept of named groups. Rather than using these unnamed groups, we will create named groups like so. Please note the syntax for the named group. Now I will do things a bit differently in order to see the effect of named groups. Firstly, let us use the match function to search for patterns. The match and search functions return a match object that have some useful methods which we can invoke. The find all function on the other hand returns a list of strings. Right, now that we have a match object, we can invoke its methods. So we can use the groups method to see all the subgroups. But more importantly, in this case, we can see all the named groups using the group dict function, which, no surprises, creates a dictionary object. Now it will certainly help if we could run our regex for all items in the file and not just the first line. So let's do a few things. Firstly, since we may need to use this regex pattern multiple times, 
let us create a compiled object. We will use the compile function for this. This also helps us bundle any important arguments into the compiled object. Notice how we have chained multiple flags in the function. We will now read our file information. Now let us iterate over each line and match our pattern. The find iter or iter function does this for us. We will store all this information into a list. And to conclude, we will store this list of dictionaries into a data frame. Our work is not complete yet. We need to do some data transformations as was described earlier in the video. But we will do this in the next video. Thanks for watching.